spin them around and around and around and around hopefully well kicking the ball into the goal but there isn't a ball here or anyone to play with so it'll be fun when things are over and we can all hang out again hi i'm george the antique nomad come with me as i wander the country in search of valuable vintage amazing antiques and cool collectibles We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Hello viewers, thanks for joining me. This is George the Antique Nomad. I'm an antique dealer and appraiser. I conduct estate sales. I travel all over the country. And I am in Birmingham, Alabama today. And let's show you what that looks like. So this is Birmingham. This is Alabama's largest city. Civil rights movement, historic sites related to that here. But today I'm here to show you an antique mall I discovered three years ago called Hannah Antiques Mall. Hannah Antiques Mall here on the right hand side. So here I am, like I said, I've only been here once and they had good quality merchandise. There were some other stores in town that were neat too, but this one had enough that I think it might fill an entire video. So let's go see what they've got. So I'm not sure what kind of a building this was originally, but it has a bunch of different rooms divided up into dealer spaces. So we should see a pretty good variety of things. Antiquing in Alabama is often a little more to the traditional side. So I'll be curious to see what the variety is at this point. I'm going to go in this room here. They're having a 20% off sale and they have these really splendid crystal candelabra. This pair looks like a set that would date from the 1940s or 50s. I can imagine them on Liberace's piano. They're quite spectacular and they are priced at $550. I'm used to seeing a lot of Irish pine in stores in the Northwest, but this piece is French. You can tell with the detailing, it's more of a provincial or country style. And I would say from the way it's made that it's probably a 20th century piece. Big spacious room for display or storage, blanket storage, quilt collectors like these types of pieces. Speaking of quilts, here's an interesting variation. You have a very definite pattern with the triangles made up of whatever scraps or remnants they had. This was a way to use up a lot of extra scrap fabric. And looking at the type of fabric and prints used, I would say that this piece probably dates from the 1920s. Okay, it's priced at 175. I have to say that's kind of an old school price. I do like the piece though. I think this door is pretty. I like the old stained glass. They say it dates to 1909. You know, architectural pieces, if you want something unique for a house you're restoring or to make a new house more interesting and individual, antique stores are a great place to look for this sort of thing. It's priced at 325. Getting a custom door made with that sort of stained glass in it would cost you double that. Here's a pair of Fenton Snowcrest vases in the emerald color. These were done in the 1950s. There were pieces done with the milk glass with the green edge, which are called emerald crest, but this is snow crest because the white is the edging. They're priced at 62 each. Also on the architectural bent, these old doorknob sets are something that are very useful to people who are redoing houses. These are only priced at $20 a set. That's actually low compared to what I was seeing at the shows in Florida and then we've got just the door knobs at $15 for the set. I remember on the show Bewitched, Aunt Clara, the one who never could quite remember everything, uh, collected door knobs. That was one of her things on the show. And yes, there are indeed door knob collectors. We're going to walk into this next room here. We have a nice old padded tufted bench or pew. Unusual to see that upholstery. This little piece has a Bombay aspect to it because of the curvature on the top there that you can see with the reflection. Cute little size. And we're going to open it up and see some fittings, I think. Oh yes, there we go. French inlaid secretary desk asking $4.25 for the ladies' writing desk. And that seems like an appropriate price. Here's something I've never seen in person. I've heard that foosball was a lot older than we think of in this country because it really only became a thing here in the 1970s, but here is a French 
foosball set. Modèle déposé, meaning it was uh, made in France, and you would have paid 10 francs to play this. This probably dates before the Second World War. So the idea that there's many of these left is hard to fathom. I suspect that there's very few of these. This one is priced at $3,750. Again, it may seem like a lot, but it's got everything. Even the original ash trays are still in it because this would have been a time when you would have smoked while playing games. And of course, the thing to do with these would be to spin them around and around and around and around. Hopefully, well, kicking the ball into the goal. But there isn't a ball here or anyone to play with, so it'll be fun when things are over and we can all hang out again. Here's a different kind of china we don't see very often. This is Dickens where These are all pieces inspired by Charles Dickens' stories. And so we have, for example, Mr. Bumble and Mrs. Carney taking tea together. The neat thing about these pieces is that they do have the traditional finial, which would always have been some sort of uh, vegetable. And here you can see again inside you have Mrs. Bumble again. The fact that they decorated the bottom means these were premium pieces when they were new. And it's got illustrations from Dickens and Adams is the company. They did a lot of white on blue applied slip like Jasper wear. But they also did a lot of these scenic patterns. They did a lot of scenic souvenir pieces from around the world as well. They're all going to date to about 1910 and I think that the price is actually very good. $30 for the covered vegetable seems inexpensive. I'm going to have to look this up. Here's a scarcity. Alabama is football crazy and Birmingham has a couple of times had teams in leagues other than the NFL. And this one is from the World League of Football. This is the Birmingham Fire. We don't see a lot of pennants from old defunct sports leagues because they typically didn't get as much attendance and so there isn't a lot of the regalia left. So nice to see some enamel bread boxes that are actually real. If you look at these they are the heavier gauge metal. You can see in the way it rolls and you can tell by the lettering here. They also have normal wear, some chipping, a little bit of rust along the bottom like a bread box that's a hundred years old should have. And these are priced at around 145 each, which is why I guess we see reproductions. But you sure can tell the difference in quality when you get up to close to an original. This is a nice tramp art box. You can see with the fabric and the inlays and they got some brass mounts. Tramp art is called this because it largely was made by people using leftovers and a lot of times it was actually sold by people who were going town to town trying to make a living making things out of anything they could get, especially in the Depression era, although a lot of this stuff starts really around the early 1900s. Ooh, look at the crazy shade on this guy. It's supposed to have prisms hanging under, but that would be easy enough to get, and it's cherubs on the bottom, so it's basically a 60s California Hollywood Regency style lamp, but I love that shade. It's priced at 100 not a bad price, really. Here's a case full of original vintage shoes, accessories, purses, all made of natural skins of various sorts. These round patterns here are ostrich, and then you have a pair of shoes. And these are all 1940s, you can tell by the little bit of an open toe and the big chunky look to them and the high heels. This would be so cool to have at a Florida show. It's priced at 175 which is about the top end of what they go for, so it's going to have to stay here. But it is an alligator sprinkler head. It's going to be 1950s cast iron, it's heavy as can be, and what a great form. And then this would spin and shoot water out all over the place. Very cool. I like this piece a lot. Here's a very nicely kept room full of linens and I see some nice patterned 1950s tablecloths in there. What I like is that they have things out where you can see them and get to them without having to rifle through and tear everything up. And they also have things tied together so if you have sets of napkins you can actually see them all in one place rather than a big lump which is nice. And then, I think this is so smart, they have all sorts of wonderful children's christening dresses and clothing, party dresses like this one that looks like something that would have been done in the 
probably 50s or 60s looking at that pattern but they're all hung where you can really get to them easily they're all laundered and pressed it's really nice to see this type of effort being put into linen so that they stay nice and are really shoppable and there's one in here that looks kind of cute that i wanted to get to and there it is no you can't go to school with mary and her little lamb and the lamb has to stay home Little Hannibal is not a book I've seen before, but that's a great image on the front. Looks like 1940 approximately. Magic Dots for Little Tots, that's going to date to about 1915 or 20. That's by Milton Bradley. This dealer I'm going to pull back and you'll see they have a lot of fun childhood items. They've got tin dishes. They've got this Mark's Honeymoon Express train that runs around on its little track. They've got these wind-up metal horses from Japan from the 1950s. And several pieces of Steiff over here. The little tiger is a good example. And that one is priced at about one and a quarter. They have smaller pieces in the $40 range. I wanted to show this paperweight because this is Gentile glass and it has a very distinctive mark. It looks like Murano but it's actually made in the United States. And here's the ship with the G on it. That's what tells you that it is Gentile glass. And Gentile is one of a number of 1980s and 90s era glass blowers, along with Joe St. Clair and others who did paperweights and the like. This is priced about $20, which is a good price for these. They cost far more than that when they were new, and they're really good quality. So it's an area that people are starting to pick up in thrift stores for resale. A lot of people who know China and dinnerware from the 1980s and 90s might look at this and think it's Port Marion from England, which was very popular in that period. This is by Royal Worcester, another English company. Royal Worcester actually had been in business since the 1700s. You can see their mark there. They went out of business about the year 2000, and this is a 1990s set called Worcester Herbs. And so this was their version of herbal china from about 1990. It's been just long enough now that we're starting to see a lot of people looking for these items for pattern matching where they didn't get the entire set new or they've broken a piece or two. And so we're seeing a lot of interest. This particular set has 75 pieces and it's only priced at $4.95, which if you think about how much you're getting for that is a pretty this good place deal. really does go on and on. I'm back in the very far back of the first floor. So this is another scarce toy from the 1950s. Anything that looks like an experimental car that looks like it would have been driven, oh, I don't know, in outer space perhaps, these are hard to find. This is by Yonezawa, which is a Japanese company, and it's got the box. It's in near mint condition. It is battery operated. It's got... Uh, flashing light. It makes engine noises. The canopy opens and closes. Very hard to find these in good shape. Here it is in the back. It says Future Car Seahawk. So the Seahawk, very hard to find, $495. I've seen a lot of toys over my years in this. I have to say I've never seen this one before. Above it is an interesting piece. This is an inauguration ribbon for the inauguration of President Nixon in 1969 priced at $19. You would have had to have been in Washington, D.C. at that time to get one of those, so they're not easy to find. I'm gonna take a look and see, that might be a buy. It's another neat thing. I'm sorry to show you so much in cases where I can't get to it, but this dealer has really cool stuff. These are before the Second World War. These are epaulettes in their original carrying box issued by the United States Navy. The case looks like 1920s or 30s to me. They have them priced at 325. This would have been for uh, dress uniform for a high officer. And to the left of it we have a cute little child's stove, only $25, but behind it in the corner is pumpkin chocolate mold. This is going to be to make candy pumpkins from about the 1930s. That's priced at $2.95. Chocolate molds are very collectible and especially anything Halloween related. Now again, this is largely an interior store, so you see a lot of antique and vintage items presented like they would be in a house that was very house proud and liked having a lot of stuff. And they set it up just like you'd see it, even a fold bed with 
the morning's breakfast service, brought in on trays. Must be a nice way to live. I have yet to have anyone bringing me breakfast on a tray, but I'm looking forward to that day. In this case here, they have a lot of Geisha Girl. Geisha Girl was done in Japan in the 1930s especially, and you'll see, of course, the motif, hence the name. And there are cups and saucers, there are plates, there are shaker sets. These pieces were very popular in the late 20s and into the Depression era. And there are people who collect this and this alone because there's so many varieties of it. And the prices are reasonable. You see a lot priced in here in the $8 range for starting. I wanted to show off this very elaborate French garniture set consisting of the original mantel clock in the marble rouge and the five light candelabra with the brass mounts. And this is going to be a 19th century set, probably sometime around the 1870s. You can see the detail in the face. French clockmakers were considered very high quality at this time. And this set is priced at $1,200 very special and very elaborate. Also wanted to show these paperweights since we've shown a few paperweights in this one. These are from France and these are sulfides and the sulfide was a form of clay originally in the 19th century a lot of paperweights were made out of sulfide or they'd have an animal or something made of sulfide suspended in them. They were inexpensive and crude back then but very collectible. Well in the 60s Bacharach said hey, let's use that sulfide idea, but we'll do it in a very refined way, and we will sell paperweights that are heralding various famous people. A lot of these were done in the late 60s, and you saw there everybody from JFK to Paul Revere in the gray. You've got Herbert Hoover in the blue on the left. Here's an entire shelf of Beswick Beatrix Potter figurines. Beswick was the company that originally had the rights to make these before they sold out to Royal Dalton and you will see all of the characters represented in the Beatrix Potter books. Everybody from Tom Kitten to Appley Dappley. Prices on these are in the 15 to 25 dollar range which is absolutely correct for the market today and the Bestwick pieces are more desirable than the Royal Dalton because they are older and are marked accordingly. Here is a lovely Victorian glass apern, and the prices have really come down on these. This has the three cranberry glass trumpets, which were made with 24 karat gold. It's got the riggery. It has the two curling branches that were made for design, although initially they were made with the idea that they could hold other items. This has actually been marked down to 275. That's a very reasonable price, in my opinion. I sold one of these for double that just two years ago. It was quite similar. And that went to a dealer who was going to sell it in the Northeast. So if you like this sort of thing, this is a good time to be buying Victorian glass. The prices have really come down and there's pieces available that were not really available for many years. This is a pretty incredible piece of furniture. This is Renaissance Revival, meaning made after pieces in the Renaissance era in that same style. And look at the amazing detail in the carving and the painting, the cameo paneling, the grapes and lion head and everything carved into this piece are really spectacular. And the coloration is very thoughtful. This would be a really interesting central piece in a room to decorate around. You can see it has the hinges that look like the original and this does have age. We can open it up and take a look. You can hear the big creak of the door. You can look at this. It's a little hard to see because it's very dark, but you can look at this hardware and the carving on the inside as well. And this gives you an idea that this is a 19th century piece. Now, part of the interest in traditional, and you'll see a lot of French furniture, Alabama was controlled by the French for a period of time. And there is French heritage here. This is an ebonized 19th century black console made in France. Unusual form with lots of shelves, sort of like an etagere, but a little more sturdy. This is a hand-painted panel with the musicians leading the revelers. And then below you see this very nice arched beveled glass. 
This piece is priced at about $1,100, and I can see why. Again, this is a very unusual form. I haven't seen a piece identical to this anywhere in my career. I wanted to show these retro 1950s patio chairs because they're well priced. They are priced in the $65 range for originals. That's not a bad price these days at all. And we do see these down south in this kind of condition where it's actually usable a lot more than I see them in other parts of the country. Good place to shop for this sort of thing. So I have a bunch of interesting garden items. This metal plant holder with all the branches is priced at $145. It's truly shabby chic. Nobody had to scrape that paint. It is the way it aged being outdoors. We have a concrete Venus for $99. That's actually a very good price for an older piece of concrete when it's a classic like this. Then you've got the Jackrabbit. You've got some really great uh, concrete planters. All these pieces have enough age. They look like they're probably 1960s vintage or before. And this is what people are enjoying putting in their gardens these days. And then back here we have this little set, only 45 each for the chairs and 45 for the little table. And those could be Saltarini or another designer. You really have to look in the catalogs to know for certain. This is a Jefferson Golden Hour Invisible Hands Clock. And you can see the hand behind and the hand in front. I'm going to have to plug this in and see if it works because it's priced at $58 and they sell for double that. Okay, I've set it and we're going to let it sit here and run. I've plugged it in and we'll see if it does anything. I hope it does. I love these things. I find some really interesting wisdom in antique stores and I have to say I've never seen this, but I like it. Something else I like, this spangled spatter glass French art glass lamp priced at $2.95. Now if that turns out to be by Schneider or an important maker, that could be a very good deal. This little Alvin Sterling tray with the cups with the colored inserts I think is fun. Colored inserts were mainly done by Reed and Barton in silver plate, but Alvin actually was one of the few Sterling makers who did the same thing in the 1950s and 60s, and it just gives it a real neat look. I was told there's new dealers upstairs, and this sign says that too, so let's go see what's upstairs. This looks like something that might have been an old department store in this part of the building. I get the feeling this building had a lot of things going on at one time. This is a really fun piece here. This brass and marble cherub coffee table. It's very schmaltzy. Definitely Hollywood Regency. It's only $65. I think for what it is, it's a lot of fun. If I had room in the truck, I would get it right now. So Samsonite is from Denver, Colorado originally, done by the Schwader brothers. And they originally just called it Samson. So here you've got the Samson glass holder and ashtray for card tables. This is going to date to the 20s. And these just clip onto the end of your card table. They're priced at $29 now. And the reason is that people who have the old Samsonite card tables the antique ones and a lot of them have patterns or interesting things on them so people do collect them they want these things as accessories here's a neat piece that you don't encounter very often that i want to show you this is a wooten desk wooten desks were made in indianapolis by the wooten company these are 1880s primarily and the thing that was special about them is that they folded up into a solid piece of furniture a lot of these were used as station masters desks at railroad stations for example so now you see with the secretary flipped up so that that's solid these are the supports the iron supports that came out you push these back in and then gently you can swing this shut I know this is going to look like a bunch of dark nothing until I do it but you swing it shut and there's the front of your piece of furniture and if you do the other door everything seals up and this is the piece of furniture that you have this very stalwart stately desk the idea was you could close everything off and lock it so that if you had important papers and things, you could do all this filing, have all these cubby holes, have all the space, and then easily shut it off where it was for your eyes only. Wooten and Company, Indianapolis. And the patent date on that, I believe, says 1874. 
four. So these are very desirable, very collectible, and very expensive. There are not many of them left in existence. I believe this one is priced over $10,000. I see so few Wooten desks that I don't even know what the market is now. I think I've encountered about one every 10 years, so to see one in an antique mall is a real surprise. Here's a case full of Wedgwood Jasperware, and while these are more contemporary pieces, probably 1960s and 70s when they were at a collecting fervor, there are a lot of things that we find thrifting and out in estate sales these days, so let's take a look at them because they have these priced about right for retail. The bamboo candlesticks, that's an unusual pattern. Anything that's not the usual blue and white color seems to attract attention. And they're priced at 30, which I think is reasonable for what those are. You have the stag decanter in the back at 75. The pink tray here is a little more desirable. This medallion, because it's the black basalt, priced at 30, that's about right for retail as well. Compote is 22 little boxes or under $20 these days. You'll also see several different colors here. The green was something that was produced in the 60s and is popular with collectors now. You can see in the back Wedgwood International Seminar. They started having collector groups form in the late 60s and through the 70s and so a lot of people started amassing Wedgwood Unfortunately, some of the collector group items themselves are awfully common because they made so many. One thing that's not so common, however, are the jewelry pieces. There are a lot of collectors for Wedgwood jewelry, and we don't see high prices on these, but they're a lot of fun. They did cufflinks, they did earrings, they did pins, they even did the ring with the anchor there. Prices usually are in the $20 to $30 range, sometimes $35 to $40 for more elaborate pieces. This yellow on the white is an unusual color combination rarely seen. And they did things like table lighters. So there's all this 1960s era Wedgwood that are forms that are different than the original. I thought this was a very pretty bride's basket because of the yellow opalescent. It's Victorian, 1880s or 90s. These were largely given to brides on their wedding day as a centerpiece. And this one with the discount, because it's on sale, is only about $85. These really have come down quite a lot in price, and they're just lovely. So if you want a really fancy centerpiece or a nice bridal gift, this is a really lovely traditional piece. This could be your something old for the bride. Although I don't know how she'd wear it, but she could carry it down the aisle. I wanted to show these three items here. The one on the left and the one on the right are gunpowder tins. DuPont from about 1900 and the Canadian from about 1920. Gunpowder tins are very collectible, as are old ammunition boxes and other things related to weaponry. In the middle, we have a woman breastfeeding and it says, hot meals served every day at the St. Louis World's Fair of 1904. And that's done on aluminum. Aluminum had only recently come into commercial production. I think in 1901 they figured out how to make it out of bauxite. Before that it was considered a semi-precious metal and was used in jewelry because it was very expensive and hard to get. Then I wanted to show you a few things over here I find interesting. The pocket flask is Millefiori glass. Then we see a Spanish-American War bugler. And that's an unusual piece, especially because it shows what he did. And then above, we see a fully restored tin type of Confederate General John Bell Hood. That would be a very hard piece to find after the discount around $350. Here's a nice needlepoint fireplace screen. Now you might think, why would they do something in fabric and then put it in front of the fire? But this was the side that would actually set out from the fire. So any sparks and embers would hit the back and hopefully not catch the thing on fire. It's very pretty though. This is going to date to somewhere around 1900. It's priced at 195, which is pretty reasonable for what it is. Okay, we came back to the clock and look, it's run. It runs, I'm so happy, it's half price. So not only is it not $58, which would have been okay, it's $29. So I'm taking this guy home. Well, Hannah's proved to be fun again. I got this really great golden hours clock. I got a little Whiting and Davis a uh, mesh purse, a John Wayne bronze medallion, and a little wing set that says Junior Astronaut with the space shuttle on it. So fun little finds and I'm very glad I stopped in Birmingham.
Well, I found a coronation plate with my name on it, King George. Okay, I'm not that guy, but you know, it's fun to dream, all right? Anyhow, I am having a lot of fun here in Birmingham, and I thank you for joining us. I am George the Antique Nomad on Facebook, Periscope, Twitter, and Instagram, and we'll see you on YouTube next week with more fun and antiquing adventures. So take care until then. Bye-bye now. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below, and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!